Okay, my movers and shakers, welcome to another round of Emmett's Blackboard. And last ages actually, I have been having a lot of requests for this. I wasn't planning on doing it, but because I've had so many requests, I've made a special video for you guys to help you understand the bridge. So, this is welcome to building the bridge. So, we're going to look at the bridge, and the bridge is one that I really enjoy developing people. That we must look at the bridge, that if you are doing the bridge to develop the bridge, you're going to be banging your head against the wall. It's not what we do. A bridge is a display of flexibility. It is not something you can do when you are flexible and have achieved certain flexibility targets. A bridge will be simple. If you're constantly doing a bridge to try and get your bridge, you're just going to be annoying yourself. So we're going to just look at what constitutes a good bridge first. And we're going to explain some of the key points and then go along. I have a good post about a bridge on Facebook that you can already see. If you go to my Facebook, it's one of the ones in my photo album. Check it out, and it has a bit of an essay about it, just explaining it. But we'll cover some of these points anyway. So, we're going to start with the bridge. So, we'll start with the wrists. So, wrists, in terms of bridge, you need a decent amount of wrist flexion. That's flexion there. Not so much when you're actually in the bridge, because the angle here is going to be less than 90 degrees, or greater than 90 degrees. Where's my red chalk? Grab some chalk. So, this is going to be greater than 90 degrees, so we don't need that much, but for the initial starting position, when our hand is up here to push into the bridge, we're going to need that bit more range of motion than you think. So that's our first point. We want nice, flexible wrists. This also ties in with our hand stance. We want nice, strong, flexible wrists. Next, in terms of the elbows, elbows are just going to be straight. First thing, as you know, I like a bit of hyperextension in my elbows, nicer lines, stronger support. Not 100% necessary. Straight is perfectly fine. Hyperextenders just get a bit fancy. Now, first things first, so in the bridge here, so in the shoulders, we want the shoulder line, if I drop from the furthest point of the shoulder down, I want my shoulders to be ahead of my wrists here. I don't want them to be behind the wrist in an ideal bridge. This leads into, basically what I'm describing is the intermediate level bridge. This is where tumbling will be easier, handstands will be easier, we can start training walkovers successfully, we can start training limbers, we don't need to worry too much about the bridge. So in this, we want the ability to push our hands, shoulders that way, relative to our fixed point of our hands. Now this is achieved by doing two things. It's achieved by our shoulder blades here, it's achieved by retracting our shoulder blades, as well as elevating them. So we're pushing our shoulders forward, so it's back. At the same time, even though our hands are on the ground, we're going to be screwing our hands outwards, which is so this direction. So if we think internal rotation is this way, so we're actively going to be pushing our hands that way on the ground. Now this is going to have an effect. If you see the head position here, as we externally ro internally rotate the shoulders in an overhead position, this will have the net effect of pushing the neck forward. That is fine when you're holding. When you're tumbling, we need something slightly different. But for holding a bridge, the harder you squeeze the shoulder blades and the more you elevate them, the more you rotate them, the more your head will go forward. That is perfectly fine. Next thing, I have the torso divided into two rough segments. So imagine this is the rib cage here. Now, we need the rib cage, the drawing's a bit off. This should be a bit more stacked over the shoulders. So we need to coax out. We need to look at the spine, not as a segment, but as something that bends. This is a bit different, people are thinking thing. So we need to look at the spine, that it's a stick that's got an even bend all the way this for intermediate bridging, contortion and other stuff is a completely different situation. We're looking for an even bend, a nice even curve, like if you've got your French curve ruler set out, that we'd see a nice continual curve. So we want to see that thing. So most people will get stuck around the thoracic spine. In my experience, between T7, T4 and T7, is where people really get stuck. Don't ask me exactly why, because it's very detailed, but trust me on this. So a lot of people, I find, will need direct mobilization of that, so we can get actually get in there with our thumbs and mobilize those segments individually, and that will basically free them up. Got to remember, T-spine, most of our joint segments, there's a general rule of thumb in the body, if you're trying to free up a joint, or we've got a joint that's not moving properly, it is freed up by rotating that joint. It is not freed up by trying to put that joint. Same with wrists. So if I take my wrist, I want to free up my wrist. I want to rotate in. Same with ankles. It's the same. I want to rotate around. Knees, hips, it's all the same. Rotation frees up your joint capsules better than actually pushing it through flexion extension cycles or whatever it does. You're going to trust me on that one. 
Same again. So then at the same time, our lats, because these run around the back of the body, they're going to have to be flexible too. You see where I'm going with the display of flexibility. Lats, most of the time, we need to go this way to bring them under full stretch. Same thing. Now we're looking at the lower abs, so mine are belly buttons about here. So at this section, it's the same. We want our abs to be able to, abs have a contrary function in the bridge. They need to be tight, but they also need to be strong enough to extend their full range of motion at the same time. So we need strong abs, so we're not completely relaxing. If you relax completely in the abs, you're going to feel pain just below the rib cage. That's your cue for that in your spine. But if we keep our abs tight, they'll support the spine, lift it, and help traction it out a bit. Next, pelvis and hip flexors. This is the one where, this is where people get stuck the most. So you try the bridge, they can't, the pelvis actually can't rotate, and then because their hip flexors are so damn tight, and then they can't actually achieve a bridge in the left bang ahead. So we can skip ahead in our training, and uh, we can train this segment here with our feet raised up, it takes this hip flexor demand out. At the same time, we can wait for our hip flexor to catch up. This is what I'm talking about, is a display of flexibility. It isn't something we do, because if we're trying to stretch, think about it, we're our bridge. We're trying to stretch our shoulders, our rib cage, our stomachs, our hip flexors, our rectus femoris, which are quads, all at once, at the same time having the ab strength, so the ass strength, shoulder strength, everything at once working in tandem to try to do the stretch, it's banging your head off a wall. So hip flexors need to be treated separately. The same thing, same thing rectus femoris needs to be treated. Rectus femoris is one of your quadricep muscles. So we're thinking hip flexor stretches, check out Kit Lachlan, has some fantastic stuff on his flexors. Rectus femoris, if we look at the couch stretch as well, these ones free them up immensely. So now that we've got the anterior line. So the bridge is basically the anterior fascial line of the body. So we've got everything here nicely opened. So we'll go through, quick run down again. So arms straight, shoulder blades retracted and elevated. Head is going to be poking through a little. Rib cage is pushed over hands and in standing. Nothing, you're not feeling blocked up in there. Same time, abs are tight but extended. Contrary, but it works. Hips, glutes are engaged and they're active, our hip flexors aren't tight, so we can actively rotate our pelvis. This will stop the pain you feel just below your lower back, just below the pelvis. There's your two cues on that. Same thing, legs are straight, pushing back, and we're pushing through our heel. This is slightly contrary to what you might have done, so we'll push. Now, some things I find immensely helpful in bridge. One, if you can't do a bridge, is two bridge from a box. Put your feet up on a box. Great, we can train this half. Next half, kit fle hip flexors. Check out Kit Lachlan. So we've done this. Now we want to train our bridge. So first we need to look at getting into the bridge. What you find is initially, if you can actually achieve a bridge position, you want to do a test with a partner. Achieve, hold onto their ankles, have them lift you up. That's your test, see where you are. Assess, feel where the pain is. If you've got pain in your lower back or if it's just a stretching pain. So pain in the lower back, rib cage, that will give you a key point of where you're tight. If you can't get your legs straight, your hips are tight. If you have pain in your lower back, hip flexors are tight. If you have pain just below your rib cage, your abs aren't supporting or they're quite tight. If you're pushing forward, you can't get your shoulders up high enough, your lats are tight. If you can't get your chest forward, your T-spine is tight. So. With those in mind, give all this stuff a go. Check my Facebook for another post. It'll show you sort of my bridge. My bridge and my Facebook picture is basically the bridge I can achieve without a warm-up. That's the goal of good flexibility training is that we can just achieve these range of motion. If you have to warm up for a month, it's not that good. So anyway, give that stuff a go. If you have questions, hit me up on them. You know where to find me. And if you like my stuff, like and subscribe. Catch you next one.